crafters this is kivon from ktstamps.com creating cards for you and it is hump day and yes i'm going on just a few minutes early i have some things that i have to do that uh, this is the only time i could get them done and you guys know right around the holidays and merry christmas i hope you guys all had a great holiday today is hump day sketches this sketch comes to us from sketch inspiration and i don't know if you can see it's just a card base with some designer series paper with some type of either ribbon or um, a different piece of paper on the outside that will divide it and with some type of sentiment in a square. Now, I did lots of different things because I just thought, I don't know exactly how I want this to look, but I decided I'm just going to go with it anyway, and again, th these are just my interpretations. So, before we get started, I want to remind you that the mini catalog is coming out. I'm so excited for it, and it starts January 4th and goes till the end, I think it's the end of April. Yes, and am I on the right one? No, I grabbed the wrong, oh my goodness. Hold on, let me see if I can find this really fast. catalog. I do not know why I am so brain dead today. This is our new catalog. All I have to do is look at the date. Oh my goodness. Well, as things are going right now, I am having a hard time hunting my cards for today. I do not know where I put them. I do know where I put them like Susan Campfield would say, found it. So these are the cards that we are making today. These are my take on the sketches. And I know this doesn't have anything, but I really, I love this. Um, Robbie Rubula is the creator of this design and boy, I just think it is absolutely beautiful. So I wanna take you through that. So this is going to be the first card that we are making today. Everything is done with the garden meadow. And this is the bundle. Um, if you add this beautiful designer series paper, which is meandering um, meadows. Oh my God. It is, I tell you, it is some of the prettiest designer series paper I have seen. Stampin' Up! is just really going overboard on their papers. I love it. Um, so this also has the dies. For me, it has the dies inside. We will take our little wheelbarrow and cut it out. And I did that with Memento ink. I added the brushed butterflies right here and then coming out in january we will have then this is called the adhesive back dragonflies and birds and so i just decided that i really wanted to have just a little bit of a dragonfly around it now you guys will have to tell me if i um got rid of the problem right now of the blurriness. So I've changed my my focus to manual instead of auto and I'm hoping that you can see the cards better. So that's the direction that I'm going in. So today we have a piece of foil that we'll be retiring in, you know, at the end of December and this is Granny Apple 
foil and it also comes with uh, melon mambo and they're just beautiful i love the way that they look i have my um fresh freesia and it is scored in half I have every day as a fresh start and I just really liked it. I just thought, you know, when you have a wheelbarrow full of garden, it's just looking so nice. You have, you know, bugs and butterflies and dragonflies and birds and everything in your garden. I just wanted something that looked awesome. And then in the inside, I just have a strip of the DSP thinking of you and of course you have to have your garden boots out so that is ready for me too so with this we are going to be coloring this today so I'm just going to add this inside and I don't know I think my screen or my camera let me see if I can lift it just a little bit so you can see just a little bit more of everything. Nope, I guess it is not going to let me do that. Let me see, I'm going to try one more time to see if I can get everything in view. So this is the card that we are doing, and this is just the inside of my card. So I'm going to bring in my silicone pad. And guys, I'm so excited for you to see the glass mat and the all the silicone stuff that goes with it and the stuff that you can wipe it all off with. And oh my God. It is just fabulous. I, I just absolutely love it. Okay, so we are, let me see, as I look at this, we want to put it on. So I'm going to make sure that this is as far towards the edge as possible. And then I am going to take, it looks like it goes, nope, it goes this way, I think. I'm just going to take my DSP and just put it right down on my granny apple. Let me see if I can get this so it looks. Okay, and guys remember that all of the dimensions are on my blog, so please go to ktstamps.com and you will see all the blog information. Boy, am I having a hard time with this. Okay, we are just going to put it down. And so I made this at about the same the same size. Okay, with the five and a half. So that's what I did. So it's five and a half. This designer series paper is five and a half. So it should go all the way down. Then I am just going to bring in a piece of paper. And I am going to bring all the combo stampin' blends that I had that I created my um, flowers with. So this is everything, including Wing Castella. And I don't think, I don't think it shows up very well on here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is that we are taking our, um, our, this is our petal path. And we are just going to color the tire in the light. And all I'm doing is kind of outlining it, going around in circles. I don't have to get it all because I will go through and take my dark 
and get the outsides and the insides. So that is one. And I'm doing everything right now with the bold. Not with the flare, but with the bold. And I don't know. Sometimes you'll have to let this set before you can see the shading. And you can hear it squeaking. All right, so that's all I did. I did that with the wheel. Then I took my pecan pie and I, oh, wow, and I forgot. We're going to do one more with the petal and we're just doing the handle up above. And I just did that in dark. We're going to start off with the light and I'm just kind of putting everything down. It doesn't have to be done nicely. I don't have to get it all because I will come back with my dark and I will outline everything. And I just went around all the leaves and the flowers and I will do that a second time with the dark. Now I'm not the best when it comes to coloring. I just, I know that I love to color. I know that my favorite part is mixing the colors. So I just think that that is my favorite part of this. And you can just see how the dark just kind of gives it that little bit of a touch up. Now I'm not making sure that everything is covered. I'm just kind of giving it some a different type of shading or lightness to it. Now also on the outside of the wheelbarrow there is also a part that you can see that's the inside and all I did was take my dark and I just went around the outside. Alright, so that's what that looks like. And again, you can go back and you can mix the colors for time. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like it is. So then I took the granny apple and I started with the light. And all I did was color all the leaves in. And I didn't do a great job. I just kind of put the color on the inside just so it would fill up the leaf. And then what I'm going to do is go back in with the dark and I'm going to give it some shading. And then you can really see where this part of the flower starts or the leaf starts to shine. No matter where you are, it's just, it just is beautiful. Now, I am not one that does a lot with where is the light. I just kind of put the shading in and just let it be. So that's, again, all I'm doing. I took my light. This is Mellow Mambo. This one doesn't matter, and all I'm doing is taking some and putting it at some different flowers. So that's all I'm doing. I took the dark, and I just went back in, and I colored the center. I took the Orchard Oasis. And of course, this is the dark. I'll do the light first.
Okay, and then I took my dark, and again, I just added in the middle, and I just let it bleed towards the outside. So you also have that. I have my balmy blue, and I just colored in the rest of the flowers with the balmy blue. And I did the exact same thing with the uh, ends. I just let it bleed. This one doesn't bleed. The flare doesn't bleed as well as the, the fine. And then I took my Highland Heather and all I did, and this should be the, oh, this is going to be the light I'm starting with first. And I'm just coloring down on the inside, taking up the space, and I hope my head is not getting in the way. And just kind of filling it up. So there's lots of good stuff, and here's what it looks like so far. I'll let it take a second to get focused. And now I'm taking my purple, the darker Highlander, and I'm just going down the sides. So there looks like there's a two-tone to it. And so this is the way my flowers look. Now all I did was I took my... Wink Estella, and I just gave it some sparkle. I sparkled the leaves, I sparkled the flowers, I sparkled everything. And I don't know if you can see it very well in here, but it does have a beautiful little sparkle to it. As you can really see, this is, I'm just bringing it up to the light so I can get a little more, I can see my Wink Estella. Woohoo! Absolutely beautiful. And now I am taking, I'm going to try to find some. Dimensionals. And all I'm going to do is stick some dimensionals on this. And I am going to get out my pokey tool and just take off the, come on, it's supposed to come off pretty easy. And all I'm doing is poke in the middle and pulling up. All right. And at this point, I would stamp that. And then I am just going to put this here. I just think it's such a nice, easy, basic, fabulous card. And then I am going to bring in my... my little butterflies. So I have a little butterfly that I put right down at the... Oh, I'll let, I'll let this one be facing down. And then I just brought out one of the dragonflies. And I just put it down here because I also wanted to make sure that you could see the saying. So this is the way my card looks. 
I really like the card. I just, I think it is so basic, but yet, I know it brings me back to just uh, going out and seeing all the beautiful gardens that are around. Really, really enjoy that. All right, so there's our first card. We're done with one in 20 minutes. Whoa! All right, this next one is gonna be a little bit of a challenging one. It's one that I found. Um, again, Robin has a, or Robbie has a great YouTube. Please feel free, Robbie Rubula. Check that out because she will, um, she makes things look really easy. And again, dimensions are on my website. So I have everything in here and I'm going to give you what I did, which may not be the best, but I did take a full sheet and I think this is one. You can see where I cut it at. I did take a full sheet of my designer series paper to get this cut. And what I did was that I took side all right so we're looking way down here at the bottom and I wanted to make sure that I did it on my glass so it was easier to see than it is on this but I'm going to try to give you a little idea at what I'm doing So there's my two line. So when, and this is two inches. So when I took my basic borders and I took this one that looked like a little arrow, I put my paper down and I went at five and one fourth and four. And I did not do a very good job of this because it has to go up even more so I can see it. And on this, I took my, where did I just put that? The most important thing and I do not know what I just did with that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is amazing. How do you lose? Yes, thank you. So this is like my designer series paper. And my designer series paper, I'm going to just use this. It goes up to six. So on my first one, what I did was that I tried, I had to have this piece of um, post-it so it would stay. So I lined my left side up with the ruler on the side, and it should be one through six. Then I put my die down at the six and down at the two. And then I put this on and then I ran it through the big shot. I then cut this and mine is about five, I think it's about five and one eighth, maybe five and a fourth. And then I just cut evenly on both sides to get the size that I wanted. Now, when I did the exact same thing, then with the white that was underneath it, okay, I did, I took the exact same thing and I found the two and a half. And then I measured it all the way up. 
so I knew it was on the same line. Already having this in the middle, I took these and I did the exact same thing. I tried to get this as even as I could on both sides. I put my post-it down and then I ran it through the big shot. Now the only thing that I had to do when I was done with this is that I had to cut this end off a little bit. So that was it. Outside of what I was doing, that's all that I did for this. I made sure that when I set my designer series paper down, I tried to make it as even as I could on both sides. Now, I also had, I also found that I did not cut this in straight lines, so I was able to just cut it at the end if I needed to bring this five and one fourth sheet down just a little bit. So that's how I did that complicated system. Now, I do not know if that's how she did it, but I just thought that's how I'm going to do it. It was easy enough for me to figure out, and I felt like it just is what a great card it is. Now, I also did a piece of white and a piece of yellow. I have to tell you, I did not like this yellow card, and I tried to pick out this little yellow up here and I thought that it would match it really well but it seems like it's all trying to fight for positioning so what I am doing on this card is that I'm changing out the yellow and I'm putting on the white because I think that it looks much nicer and with this again my really big my glue is not very full so I'm taking my mono and again all I'm doing is just a little on here you don't need a lot because it lasts a long 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 time and it is also um, something that is very sticky. Now I cut this about an eighth of an inch shorter and then what I do is that I open it and I press on the inside. I think that's the best way to get this to stick. Then you're not going all, over all the rough edges on the outside. And as you can see I had some ink that escaped. All right, when the ink escapes, you just take your embossing folder from your embossing kit that you have in the accessory part, and you just rub it over top and it will not make it as sticky. It takes out some of the stickiness. While I'm here, I might as well go ahead and just adhere the inside and on the inside I use the textured floral I did the birthdays and then I did these two flowers and after listening to Robin she felt or Robbie she felt that these two flowers really matched a lot of the flowers in this designer series paper so I went with her I thought why reinvent the wheel so from here then, I am just taking this, and I think because this is um, has some dimension and it's kind of a little bit rugged, I'm going to go ahead. You can use either double-sided tape or you can use glue. I think both of those are better for you to use. And then I am just going to line this up with the back. Turn it over again, give it a good loving, and again, 
find out if we got any. No, it doesn't look like we did, but I did. Oh, boy. Sorry, I had to take this off because it's uneven. There you go. And you can see how uneven it gets at the bottom, but I'm just going to let that be because I believe that anytime you're making cards, it's okay to have mistakes on them. Maybe I'm one of the only ones who believes that way. Do I like it? No, but does it happen? Yes, it does. I'm going to take my glue um, dot, and this is the Knight of Navy and the gold glittered ribbon and all I'm doing is putting a glue dot right here because I like the way that it lays and I just feel that it um, gives it just a little bit of a pop and I don't know tell me what you guys think is the yellow one better than the white one or what's your thoughts so anyway that's all I did with this. The biggest part I worked on was just making sure that I tried to lay the designer series paper inside this. Outside of that, you guys, this is all I use. My textured flowers um, and my meandering meadows. Gotta get this. This is online exclusive. I love that. So this is really well worth it. And then um, new is coming out. This is our layered floral 3D. Oh my god, it's absolutely beautiful. And look, I think you can see it better on the yellow. But look at the dimension that it gives you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dimension. And maybe, I don't know if you can see it better on the white. But it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's new that's coming out. you got to make sure that you come and check that out. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. So my two cards I made today, all the dimensions will be on my blog. Again, my blog is www.ktstamps.com. And again, this is Kivant. And I love creating cards for you. You can also check me out at on my YouTube channel. And it has lots of stuff. I think they're just about, I put as much as I can on my Facebook and on my YouTube. But any questions that you have with the new catalog coming out, let me know if you need one. And I will see you next week. Oh my God, it's the new year. So happy new year. I hope that you are just having a great time, spending time crafting, sending out cards, and spending time with your family. So thank you again. Bye-bye.